Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, from Google to the UN, my first guest, Will Whiting from Justified Studio, has been working on some of the biggest creative campaigns. Now the company has turned its attention to helping pre-seed enterprises to stand out from the crowd with its Justified Ventures division. So why do early stage enterprises need to prioritise branding and what role will generative artificial intelligence play in the creative process? Will joins us now to tell us more. Will, I'd like to start the interview by getting an insight into your early career. Hey, Carl. Yeah, no problem at all. Well, I worked for a few different design branding agencies down here in London, um, working a lot with Nike and cultural institutions um, down here, like the Tate and the Barbican. And I guess just kind of learning my craft as a brand designer and really understanding how, you know, you can start to create big impact for brands through design thinking uh, and principles. Um, I did that for 10 or so years. And to be honest, I just kind of felt like I wanted a little bit more and to move kind of more into the world of business and startups and, and how you can start to use design and creative thinking as a tool for this. Um, and then, yeah, me and my other two co-founders, we've known each other for quite a long time now. And we had the opportunity to pitch on a big new fintech product called Crew. Um, thankfully, we won that job together. And um, yeah, that was it. We were kind of up and running as Justified Studio. So talk us through the process that you follow with a client when they engage your services. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, for us to sort of create big, impactful brands and and creative, like we really um, ensure that we kind of go on a big immersion stage kind of at the beginning of any engagement. You know, this is just to really understand the sort of the target audience, the sort of the market that exists in. Um, And just to really ensure that we're kind of like, um, you know, answering the brief effectively. So there's a big immersion stage at the beginning where we go through research um, and strategy, et cetera. And then we sort of that really informs any kind of creative process we go on from there. You know, that might be sort of designing a brand, building a product, building a marketing site. Um, So, yeah, it's all about that kind of understanding at the beginning, followed by a sort of creative um, expression from then and then you know some kind of activation whether that's you know developing the product or sort of activating the brand through eventing. Well how did the opportunity arise to work with Google and provide us with an insight into that specific project? Yeah no it's, it was a really interesting one to be honest so basically Google um, as a business have a creative incubator called Google Labs um, and we got approached by them um, as I mentioned to find a creative idea um, to launch uh, Google Lens, which is this new, um, you know, new part of their offering. Um, so for us, we were brought on really early stage to kind of work on the strategy, work on the kind of positioning and who they're trying to communicate with. And we kind of landed on this creative territory of find that thing, which was essentially the line that got rolled out across all the creative. Um, and yeah, we kind of got brought on to kind of help them on that journey and then kind of pulled together a whole campaign language and help activate it. And we were working really closely in collaboration with them um, at that early stage of the engagement, um, which was super fun. It's interesting because in this month's Harvard Business Review, their main feature is actually on how generative AI can augment human creativity and overcome (laughs) the challenges of democratizing innovation. It's super interesting. And I think, you know, just trying to think of it as a tool and ultimately it's going to be humans that are prompting those responses um, and, you know, kind of like tailoring the responses and curating, um, you know, the responses they may get from generative AI. So I think, you know, thinking of it as a sort of aid to your workflow and a tool is, is kind of what I'm trying to do um, at the moment. You know, may, maybe that will change over the coming years, potentially. Um, but I just think it's such an interesting intersect at the moment. Um, and yeah, really enjoying to see how that's being played out by brands um, and software companies at the moment. I think um, Slack has just announced like a massive integration with their product in terms of generative AI um, and chat GPT, et cetera. So yeah, it's, it's a really fascinating time at the moment. So trying to remain optimistic, uh, despite some of the headlines that are coming out. So on that basis, well, how will your skill set and those in your organization need to evolve? I mean... To be honest, I I don't necessarily think it's about evolution. Like, ultimately, our services, um, in terms of our creative services, are sort of a a bespoke and and tailored experience for a client. And I think that won't change for us personally as a business. Like, people always are going to want that human interaction and to be communicating with us 
you know, and our project management team and the creatives on the team. Um, so I think it's not so much about, you know, having to potentially use it the whole time and really like update our, our process and our methodologies of, of how we work. You know, it's potentially about how we can actually start integrating it into our workflow and using it as a tool in terms of, you know, specific prompts, et cetera. But it's always for sure like a, going to be a human first approach um, for the foreseeable future here at Justified. Another very interesting client that Justified Studio has worked with and is continuing to work with is United Nations. They were actually one of our first clients um, at Justified after we won uh, sort of our, our first client that I already mentioned, the FinTech products. And it's a really interesting um, opportunity where basically um, there's an insight that the work of the United Nations um, wasn't being well received um, or necessarily understood by the kind of youth of today. Um, so we were helped, um, we were brought on to help kind of create this new organization and this new subsidiary of the United Nations called UN Live um, Museum for the United Nations. And basically this was an art and cultural institution and arm of the United Nations um, aimed to kind of, yeah, better communicate the work values um, done by the United Nations. And to be honest, it was a massive strategic and communication task. Um, and yeah, really gave us some insight into the power of how strategy and good brand design can really help, you know, elevate and articulate um, the sort of complex messaging and the complex work the United Nations do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, ultimately for these big organizations, it is kind of like a communication challenge, um, you, know, you know, speaking better language to the audience um, and helping understand the, the amazing work that they're doing. I was listening to an interview recently with the president and CEO of Coca-Cola globally, and he spoke about mm. how Coca-Cola have never changed their logo in 100 years, where Pepsi <laughs> have constantly evolved and changed the font and the design of their own logo. Which side of the fence are you on in relation to that? Yeah, it's, it's a super interesting question, to be honest. And I think ultimately, you know, and again, this is just my opinion, but Coca-Cola potentially is more of the market leader like has that kind of like strength to be able to just kind of like stick to its guns and Pepsi, you know, constantly looking to evolve, catch up and nibbling at the heels of Coca-Cola. And it, it's a really interesting example at the moment as well with what's going on um, at Twitter and the whole X rebrand, you know, like for Elon, he's just trying to make like a big disruptive move um, to sort of like, you know, create this massive new naming exercise and new brand. And I guess with the Pepsi and Cola thing, you know, Coca-Cola have built a brand with heritage and longevity and they can just stick to their guns. Whereas Pepsi, I guess, are trying to constantly innovate and evolve to try and sort of create um, impact and, and kind of catch them up, I guess. So I guess it's not so much around what is more effective or a better strategy as a brand, but it's more about your place in the market and just trying to be um, clever about that, I guess. And on the topic of Twitter's rebrand to X, yes. what are your thoughts on the approach that Elon Musk took to this? Because it was far from conventional. Yeah, I mean, you know, a branding agency would always say that, you know, building brands should take time. It's about insight. It's around audience understanding, market fit. It's essentially around trying to depict multiple, you know, a magnitude of um, elements and characteristics of a brand into a singular word mark, which, you know, is a hard task and takes a lot of time and research. And I guess what Elon's done is just kind of like rip the rule book up and he's just gone through a big kind of like moment and a disruptive um, change to Twitter. And I mean, you know, we're all talking about it. It's made so much press and so arguably you know, it's kind of like been pretty effective um, in terms of, you know, like the publicity that it's getting. Um, but, you know, in terms of conventional brand design and the way that people and, and agencies create logos, it's kind of a, yeah, it's really ripped up the rule book um, in a bit of a negative way, I'd say. Now, your business has recently just launched a new division, Justified Ventures. What is Justified Ventures all about, Will? Yeah, so, so we have two sides um, or subsidiaries of Justified. One, which is more of the sort of uh, enterprise side. You know, we've spoken about the United Nations. Um, we work a lot with them and, and other, big, other big brands. And then the other side of the business is the, the ventures arm. And that essentially is our startup accelerator. Um, so we work with startups um, of all stages, but kind of specialize a lot in earlier stage startups. 
and a lot of VCs um, as well. And, you know, we feel like our services of, of strategy, design and technology can make really massive impacts, um, especially with the earlier stage startups. Um, so, yeah, we launched that um, a little while ago now. And then we also have um, another part of Justified Ventures, which is basically a, a creative fund where we actually invest creative equity and capital um, into some early stage startups, which is a really cool way of working and partnering with clients as well. And it's understandable that early stage businesses often prioritise funding and achieving growth over creatives. But why do you believe Mm. that branding is such a critical consideration for pre-seed stage enterprises? Yeah, no, it's, it's a super interesting point. And I think, you know, in, in today's market, consumers, investors, and the world expect expect a lot straight off the bat. Um, you know, there's no such thing anymore as sort of a quick soft launch, you know, sort of just like banging out a quick MVP, not done very well, or a badly thought out beta product. You know, you have one chance to put something into the world um, and you've got to get it right. And, and a brand strategy, uh, design, branding, and creativity in general can and should be a massive differential. Um, And, you know, we really see this as a catalyst to accelerate big growth um, and unlock new business value. Um, So, yeah, we really, really um, aspire to work more in this space and are having a lot of fun doing so. Provide us with some reasons this morning as to why businesses should continue to use agencies like your own when it comes to developing a new brand, as opposed to going directly to Mid Journey or Dali yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's a really interesting uh, question. And, and to be honest, I think it comes back to that bespoke human experience. And, you know, we have years and years and years of experience um, working across multiple sectors and, and clients. And, you know, you're just never going to be able to experience that same um, collaborative approach, um, just working with AI and, and working directly with bots. Um, And, you know, as as I mentioned, creativity is this kind of uncharted, um, you know, way of creating massive impact and scaling businesses up. And, um, yeah, I think ultimately humans are always going to be at the forefront of, of that conversation. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Will Whiting from Justified Studio. And I'd like to wish Will and the team continued success in this exciting creatives world. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.